Welcome everybody, it's Sylvie McCracken from sylviemccracken.com and today I have one of my incredible friends, Emily Bartlett from realplans.com. Welcome, Emily. Hello, thank you. I'm so glad you're here and going to inspire the pants off of everybody because, um, you know, a couple of things. I mean, Emily and I just had dinner, what was it, a week ago, a week and change ago, and we've known each other for several years and we've been doing, you know, similar things for several years. And it was so fascinating to have a walk down memory lane and talk about the early days and where we first got started when we were, you know, just getting going online and just starting our businesses around a day job in my case, around a practice in Emily's case. And I thought, you know what, this conversation really needs to, uh, needs to be had uh, a little bit more publicly. People need to hear this. So I'm so glad you had the time out of your busy day to uh, carve out and talk to us today. Thank you. My days aren't that busy anymore, though. Yeah, <laughs> which, is, which, is true, which is something I want to talk about as well. Um, so why don't you tell everybody just kind of what you were doing before you went online? What was your traditional uh, day job? What was your gig? Sure. Um, I am an acupuncturist and I've been practicing for 13 years. Um, and so I started off mostly working in the world of fertility and pediatrics. And um, that was my that was my gig, yeah. Yeah. And what did that look like? You know, hours wise and and schedule wise. Um, I never really wanted to be you know five days a week, forty hours forty hours a week, uh, working. So I always did three days in the office, three long days, and that's when I saw patients. I felt like it gave me a good um, flow of being able to be present and then being able to sort of Re, uh, regroup and refresh. Yeah. And so, and it took you, how, did, how long did it take you to build that practice? How many years were you uh, working on it? Oh, you know, I had babies in, in the middle. So there was a lot of stop, stop and start. So um, I think, gosh, to capacity, eh, it's probably about halfway through that practice that I felt like my practice was at capacity. Yeah. And, and I also, sorry, I brought on um, a, an associate as well who started working with us. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, I remember, I remember when that all happened too. So I, but I remember those days. I remember you were, I mean, I remember your schedule because of course I was a patient as well. Um, and I remember you working Saturdays. Was that mostly because that's when your patients were available? Um, patient availability plus, you know, I wanted to be able to have some time where I wasn't having to pay for a babysitter. So my husband would be home. Um, and that, that was the flow that worked out. So I worked a lot of, I worked evenings and then I worked weekends. Yeah. Got it. So, so on those evenings, you weren't really home for dinner with the kids or anything like that. No, never. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so interesting because your story, I feel like, you know, that like so far, I mean, that's such a, you know, such a common one. I have, I have actually uh, clients that are acupuncturists as well, but it pretty much runs the gamut, nutritionists and dietitians and everything else. And a lot of them are doing those longer days because that's when, you know, their, their clients that work full time are available as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what made you decide, you know, I mean, that was, I mean, it was a fairly successful practice, right? Like, you know, as successful as, as, as when you're trading time for money can be right. So making good income, um, uh, of course, you know, anytime you took time off, did you get paid for that? Was there any mm -hmm. sort of, income? <laughs> right. So you were in that traditional trap of like, if you want to take a month off, that means you better have found a golden goose somewhere that's going to cover you for a month. Yep. And nobody paid my maternity leave either. That's not a thing. So <laughs> <laughs> that's not a thing. Shortly after my son was born. So I'd been a couple years into practice. Um, I had gotten into doing more pediatrics and I realized uh, one, that nobody was going to pay me when I didn't work. So I needed to figure out a different way to make money because I didn't want to have to work for every hour, work, be present for every dollar that I made. Um, and two, in the world of pediatrics, I realized there were things that I knew that um, it, wasn't, it wasn't common even in like the holistic world. So it made me see that there was an opportunity there for something, information, and I didn't even know what that meant, um, so I started a blog. Yeah. Um, and that was when things started to shift as far as my attention and time. Well, well and I feel like that's, I mean, it's such an important, important point that you bring up because a lot of our, a lot of people watching are in that same, you know, kind of, uh, they want the trifecta of, they want kind of that unlimited income. They want the freedom that they don't have, whether it's they're working Saturdays or whatever, uh, but they've got to work, certainly can't take a month off. 
And then there's that impact piece, which at a certain point, once, you know, everything else is sort of covered and, and, and on the right track, you're sort of like, you know what, every single damn day, I'm telling people stop eating at McDonald's and eat this instead. Maybe this could be leveraged in a way that I can actually change the freaking world too while yeah. I'm at it. Yeah, exactly. So that's incredible. Um, so, okay, got it. So when you started, I mean, were you, you know, some sort of tech whiz? Like how did, did you just know exactly what you're doing? Got to work, got it done or, you know, or, or what did that look like? No, I had no idea. Luckily my husband is technical. He has, he was a coder. And so we would sit in bed and have arguments over what the website should look like. And after a while we decided no more talking about websites in bed, which is a good policy. <laughs> Uh, but this was before the days where there were a lot of templated uh, website options um, that now when I set up my acupuncture website, I can totally set that up myself. I don't need his help. So um, yeah, the early days was me, a WordPress site and just time at the computer. Yeah. So like just to kind of, you know, skip over, like jump over something, a, a part of that chapter that we'll come back to and in terms of how eBooks really relates to this whole story and how PDFs got you there. But let's give people sort of the, um, the, the now, you know, and then we'll kind of go backtrack into how it got to this place. Because I, I don't think people, you know, if, if people are not familiar with real plans, they should be. Um, but, you know, can you tell everybody a little bit about what the current company is and what it looks like and, and how big it is and all that jazz? Sure. Um, so real plans is a SaaS business. So it's software as a service and, uh, we are a multi-million dollar business that we built from scratch with no investment. Um, my family and I just spent nine months traveling the world while we sort of stirred the pot from a distance and attended meetings. And, uh, the team did an amazing job at making it all happen and have had our biggest year ever. Um, and we're set for some pretty big growth in the upcoming year as well. So that's where we are now, but that certainly didn't happen overnight. <laughs> no doubt. And, you know, also where you are now is, I mean, tell people what you do with most of your day these days. <laughs> <laughs> I like to work out. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite phrase when we went out to dinner was, I spend most of my day on fitness because I can. <laughs> I was like, that's amazing. So yeah, because that's another question. People have, have this, you know, I think, I think sometimes... Um, and I certainly had that when I very first started. I remember hearing that question from my now adult child when she was younger of like, if you could do anything, what would you want to do? And I feel like that's a whole other Facebook Live for another day. Um, but it really was like, why are you asking me this? That's not really my reality. I'm just going to work. I'm paying bills. I'm going to sleep and I'm rinsing and repeating. But at some point when you get to that point where it's like, oh, we're good now, like the, it's all covered you really are in that position like you, where you have that choice to decide, well, what the heck do I want to do with my day? Yeah. Like and for now, this is, left. this is it. I mean, I do a ton of meetings, but it's not, it's, yeah. it's still not like uh, the hustle days. So. Yeah. 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 Which is incredible. So, and that's, you know, that's where you're at today. Now, what I want to really highlight for people as well, because, you know, I, I, I hear every once in a while, I have an idea for an app or I have an idea for, for, for a tool or whatever else. Um, you know, one thing that you said is, you know, when you said no investment, I know you're talking about no outside investment, but really also when you very first started, when you very first wanted to replace your acupuncture business with whatever it was going to be, which at the time you weren't quite sure, did you have, you know, personal investment that could you really plop down a couple hundred dollars and hire a developer? Oh gosh, talking? no, no, it was all just whatever we could scrape by. Um, most of the money came from my practice. Uh, I read a book called The Millionaire Fastlane, which is a little cheesy, but I sort of loved that, it. Uh, Who's that? Is that T. T. Uh, I don't remember. Am I confusing you? You know those things better than I, I do. I'll probably misquote <laughs> it now, but anyway. But the idea was to see how you can um, serve the most amount of people um, and, uh, with, and create the most amount of value. So those are the two... If you're, you know, you have a product that is like a high value, you obviously need to serve less people, but um, finding something that could really serve a large number of people and solve a problem for a large number of people or bring joy to a large number of people. Yeah. Um, and so that's where I started with trying to figure yeah. out, okay, what, what kind of thing can I do? And yeah. ebook was the, um, the winner because yeah. it, it's really not an insurmountable um, achievement to write an ebook. So yeah. 
And uh, I, I want to highlight that because a lot of people make it a lot more complicated than it needs to be. But, you know, really that was your first product was a PDF. I mean, now you have a multi-million dollar SaaS company, a software company, an app and whatever else. Um, but it really was a PDF, which funded this whole other situation, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. And so I took a week off from seeing patients. My husband took the kids to the beach and um, I just spent 40 hours busting out the first draft. And from there, um, it wasn't soon after that, that we published and went live. So, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. And in terms of, you know, of course, like you wrote it in a week, which is incredible. And you didn't have the time, but you made the time. You basically took that time out of your practice and you were like, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to make this an absolute priority because this is my ticket out, which is incredible. Now, in terms of building that audience, that obviously didn't happen overnight. That took, you know, what did that take? Some consistency on your part to kind of keep that ball rolling. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was publishing content that was relevant to holistic health on a blog. Um, but it was also the early days of blogging. So it was a lot of trial and error and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a lot of guessing. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no strategy, no SEO, no kind of like winging it at the, no, I winging no it was basically, was. Yeah. I didn't know SEO what. <laughs> so it's, it's, so it's amazing because when you look back on it, you go, this is, you know, it's been incredible growth. And at the same time with what you know now, you know, with what we've figured out, basically it, you could do that so much quicker, that, oh, that totally. first part of it, um, which is pretty incredible. So um, I guess, you know, the other thing I want to really talk about is to, to stay on that, you know, that same topic really is, because it's, it's, you know, now we're kind of, you know, several years after and some of the wins are just incredible. I mean, dude, can we just, you know, just like we were talking about, we, can we just pause for a second and really talk about, you traveled the world for, for most of the year um, with your family while running a multi-million dollar company. Um, you know, your acupuncture practice is also running itself essentially with an associate. Like this is freaking big stuff, right? Yeah, it's incredible. awesome. <laughs> uh, but to bring it back down to planet Earth for a second, you know, in those early days, I mean, the reality of it is that you didn't really have any extra time uh, to, to, you know, to get this off the ground, but you made it work, right? So I want to highlight that to people because for anyone that thinks, Emily, press the button and magic happened, like there was some serious, I saw the sweat, I saw it happen. You seriously, you know, put your, you know, fingers to the keyboard and grinded it out, which is incredible. Um, but I also want to talk about some of those first, some of those early wins, which at the time were mind blowing in and of themselves. So, um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, what your husband was doing at the time and how, why he, he was able to quit his job and kind of join the, the team? Sure. Um, he was working full time in corporate America doing computer nerd stuff. I don't really know exactly what he did, but, <laughs> uh, but it was full time. And we, you know, we saw him the normal amount of time that you're a busy computer guy works. Um, and so when, um, when I launched my third product, which was um, these PDF meal plans, uh, which was the predecessor to real plans, he watched me sort of pulling my hair out and crying about how much work it was because as opposed to meal plan, uh, eBooks, meal plans are a ridiculous amount of work. Um, and so I really needed, so he volunteered to create real plans, um, which I didn't believe he could do. So he was doing that nights and weekends. And so the income from the ebook and the meal plans, um, and my acupuncture practice were, were funding, um, well, basically he decided to quit his job. So the, when he did that, we had to take a giant leap. So the income from the eBooks and from um, my practice was what funded that, that space where we leaped and we were just sort of going on a hope and a prayer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and hard work. <laughs> you were on that hope, pray and sweat plan. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, that's incredible. And I, I, you know, like I know for you now, you're kind of looking back on it going like, I, I don't know, uh, you know, that sounds, it seems like small potatoes compared to some of the stuff you're achieving today. But I think for most of the planet and for a lot of the people watching who are stuck in a practice or stuck in a day job, we have a lot of people in our group in our Facebook group and on our email list um, who are a doc uh, that's an employee. And so they really are stuck in this framework of, whatever, seeing patients all day, every day. And the thought of being able to make that leap is already such a gigantic dream. Um, the, the travel, travel the world almost seems like, okay, well, that's just ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just park that over in, uh, but, but no, but for real, but like, I, I, it's like, 
I really want to highlight that of like how incredible that was. And the fact that you were able to do that without having to have a multi-million dollar software company, it was simply by having a great product, right? We're not about writing uh, crappy eBooks, but having a great product and working to make sure that it gets out there, working to make sure that, you know, you, that audience was built in an evergreen way so that it can sell while you sleep. I mean, is that, uh, are those eBooks I'm sure, you know, still selling today? Oh yeah. I mean, the, the yeah. eczema cure over the time that I did it, we did one uh, new edition um, just to bring it up to date and it just continues. I get emails constantly just bing, 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 yeah. bing. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing, dude. Well, I mean, I, you know, it's, it's, it's so, it's great to have you, you know, kind of highlight that for people as well. And also the, the good, the bad and the ugly, right? Because it's certainly not magic and certainly not overnight. So another question that I have for you is to um, touch upon a little bit. So one of your, was it your second Feed Your Fertility? Was that your second yes, ebook? That was um, my second so ebook. you published that as an ebook, as a PDF, which is what we teach our clients to do um, for many reasons. And at some point you decided with your co-author to make that a print book. And so I want to touch on that, which I have, uh, some of our clients might be watching this as well um, so that I can tell them I told you so later. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Cause they know how I roll, but you know, what I wanted to kind of touch on that is, you know, a, would you do it again? And B, you know, kind of why did you decide to do that? How did that go? Yeah, it was, um, you know, my part, my writing partner and I, um, wrote the ebook. We were really happy with it. Um, and, but there's, there was a, I don't, I don't want to use the word ego, but there was this sense that like, we wanted the credentials of being a published author and especially as a medical professional to be able to be like, Oh yeah, I'm a published author. There was something about that that was really sexy and shiny. And even though the little voice over here was like, you know better, don't do it. I was like, ah, I mean, published author, it's a thing. Yeah, that's important. Um, and so we negotiated a book deal. Um, I would recommend if someone is so dead set on negotiating a book deal, you negotiate a book deal that is like worthy of a year's income because mm -hmm. the likelihood of you making any money after that, and I'm talking like a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars minimum, minimum as um, an advance is what you're saying. As an advance, yeah, yes, okay. because the likelihood of you making money afterwards is low. Um, so I didn't do that. Um, so we negotiated in advance, sort of knowing that was all the money we were going to make. And we busted our butts redoing the book because once it's published, published, you can't go back and make a second version and just re put it on the internet. Um, so that was a whole like rewriting of the book. Um, and then despite the fact that I had a really, um, strong audience to promote it to and other, um, bloggers that I'm friends with who promoted it, it's All like things that the publisher wants you to have, by the yeah, way, it's the whole reason why they court bloggers to do yeah. these things. Um, it was very, the sales were underwhelming. We never made any money from it. I'm, I love the book. I'm so proud of it, but I could have just printed it and had it sitting on my coffee table right. without having gone through that. Like printed one copy for yourself, basically. Yeah. I could have yeah. printed 10. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so now, I mean, I will say it makes a beautiful business card in my office. We give it to all of our fertility patients. They're super grateful. Uh, but again, we could have just printed yeah. that. And, made and I, that's, that's a great point that you make because a lot of people talk about a book being a business card. And I think that that's absolutely the case in terms of for a traditional book. Absolutely. Especially if you're making a dollar a copy. <clears throat> I mean, it, it basically is that like, if you have a way to make money on the back end and that's all you want it for, fantastic. Um, but why not do both? Why not have it be a business card and actually be a six figure, you know, income stream or whatever. Really, there's no limit, but we just like to stick to six figures um, just so that nobody's brain pops off. But, but, you know, you could do both. Right. And so what I love is you saying that of like, you're, you're really highlighting that point of it's a thing. It's totally a thing. People love the idea of a published book. They want to be able to walk into Barnes and Nobles. Do those exist anymore? Do those still exist? I don't really I don't know. know. <laughs> Walk in there and be like, this is my book. And I totally get that. But what I tell my clients all day, every day is let's just agree that it's a vanity project and not a sanity one or, or, a, you know, or a profit one. So it's like, cool, you want a printed book, fantastic. But it is, you know, compared to the amount of work that you did, I would almost argue your second one it might even be a better, a better product than your first one based on you being a better author, you being a better oh, sure. You know, and at the same time it made, what would you say, like 10% of the income of the other one? I, 
Uh, if I'm lucky. Yeah. 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 So I mean, divided by two. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. So probably not. Yeah. I mean, so that, then, and that's an incredible difference if you think about it. So, um, yeah. So if you had to do it again, what would you, what would you do differently with that? Um, I would have just stuck with the ebook. Um, and you know, I think different books have a different path to, you know, being sold. So with, with the eczema cure, I, it seemed to sell in a different way because the eczema cure isn't specific to such a small niche, surprisingly. Right. Tons of people have eczema. Whereas right. fertility, it's like you rule out men for the most yep. part. You rule out people outside of childbearing ages, you know. So yep. there, there's something to, you know, being niche but casting a wide enough net that you are addressing enough people that, can act that are actually going to buy it. So yep. um, I think that's super important with picking ebook topics. Yep. No doubt. And that's the, that's, you know, that's the foundation of our program is really, we start with that topic, which is what we found over and over again is that make or break spot where it's like, we can fix a crappy title later. We can totally uh, redo a title. But if that topic is wrong and the audience is wrong, it's going to be just an uphill battle to sell the whole way. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that over time, the second book would have continued to sell fine. It just was a different type of book and a different type of audience. So. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. And, uh, and also, even if you'd sold the same amount of copies, you were making, what, a dollar? Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. So you would have had to go, you would have had to go on Oprah or something. Yeah, um, exactly. Cool. Well, that's, that's super duper helpful. Is there anything else, Emily, that you'd want to share with anyone watching who has not yet taken the leap? Um, they're still, they're in their practice. They are getting tired knowing that they don't want to do this when they're 65 years old but maybe they're in their thirties, maybe they're in their early forties and they're starting to think, can I really do this? Is this, am I enough of an expert? Do I have something that I can share, you know, and, and is it really going to work or is it going to yeah. take me forever? Um, I think that something that a lot of, I hear from a lot of practitioners and I heard come out of my mouth and I, I still believe is that I love, I love my work. I love working you know, as an acupuncturist. I love working with fertility patients. I love working with families and women. Um, but that doesn't mean that I can also not, I, I can also love not having to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think there's a, there's some, I don't know if shame or just like, um, resistance to, but I, I'm good at this and I love it. So I should do it. And I should be it, grateful. Yeah. And you don't have to, you can love it and you can also leave it or do less of it just to have more control of your life, which is it's absolutely amazing to have that kind of freedom. Um, you know, we're billed as children, like the best jobs are like doctors and dentists and lawyers. And, but really you are working for other people and your time is not yours when you, when you have jobs like that. And if that's okay for you, then cool. But you're probably not here if that's hundred percent okay for you. Um, so I love having my freedom. Um, and I also think that if I would have sat around waiting to, think, oh gosh, is eczema, am I going to really write about eczema? What if nobody, I mean, no, there's not that many people that want to read about that. Like I just did it and saw what happened and it happened to be success. But if the other book was first, I probably would have moved on and written the second book. So you just have to get up and go and do it and stop hemming and hawing about it. Yeah. Get up and do it. Put the consistent work in, um, you know, follow the path and, and yeah, and you can absolutely do it. And I would argue that, you know, as much as you were helping people in your acupuncture practice, you're helping so many more, you're helping thousands of families now where you would never in your lifetime be able to be able to see them one-on-one -on -one if you tried. Yeah. And we also are employing, you know, like 30, 40 people at any given moment. So you know, we do, I f still feel that sense of like, gosh, my, I'm putting good impact, a uh, positive impact into the world. And I'm able to do that while I'm at spinning, <laughs> <laughs> at boxing, kicking, kicking some butt, literally sometimes. <laughs> that is amazing. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Emily, for sharing your journey. And for anyone else that's on the fence, that's thinking, do I even have something worth sharing? Do I, you know, can I really do this? Is now the right time? What if I wait for six months later or whatever else? Hop on a call with my team. That's exactly what we do. We'll get you major clarity. Everyone that's gotten off the phone with my team has said it's the best hour that they've spent in the last couple of years on their business. We'll, we'll talk about 
whether or not it's right for you, whether now is the right time for you, what is not working in your business and what you want it to get to instead. Of course, if we can help you bridge that gap, we're totally going to let you know how. And if we can't, we're going to point you in the right direction instead. So to book a call, the URL is sylviemccracken.com forward slash call, and they will absolutely help you and knock your uh, socks off. All right. So in the meantime, if you want to visit Emily's site, her website is realplans.com. Thanks again, Emily, for being here. Thank you. It's fun.